Walt Disney's parks and resorts are a vital part of the Walt Disney Company. This segment conceives, builds, and manages the company's theme parks and holiday resorts, along with family-oriented leisure activities. This segment came to life in 1971 as Walt Disney Attractions, which only included the Magic Kingdom and the Walt Disney Resort in Florida and Disneyland California. Disneyland opened on July 17, 1955 in California. Believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Production. Then has expanded rapidly, as well as the other parks. Since its opening, Disneyland has added many more parks and resorts such as Disney California Adventure, Downtown Disney, Disneyland Hotel, Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa, and Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel. Since Walt Disney World's opening in 1971, it has added the Epcot Center, Disney MGM Studios, which is now Disney's Hollywood Studios, Typhoon Lagoon, Blizzard Beach, Disney's Animal Kingdom, and Downtown Disney Retail. It started with only having three hotels when it was opened and now has over 20. The Walt Disney Company also has many parks around the world including ones in Tokyo, Paris, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. This shows that Disney has a reach and influence all around the world. In the future, Disney has given the go-ahead for another resort to be built in Shanghai, one in India, and they want to expand the park in Hong Kong. Disney also has cruise lines that started in 1995 with one ship and has since added three more ships and remodeled their first one. The Parks and Resorts segment has the second highest revenue of all the segments with a huge $15.1 billion in the 2014 fiscal year. In Disney's financial reports, it says that the Parks and Resorts operating income growth is because of higher average guest spending along with higher attendance at the parks. Since 2011, it has added over $1 billion a year to its annual revenue. Studio entertainment sector consists of Walt Disney Studio Motion Pictures, Walt Disney Animation Studio, Walt Disney's Pixar, Walt Disney's Music Group, Marvel, Touchstone, Disney Nature, and Disney Theatrical Group. Disney was one of the first to revolutionize animation with Snow White in the first feature-length Technicolor animation. As stated previously, the Walt Disney Company has primarily gained market share through an acquisition growth strategy. This corporate-level strategy has made Disney a much more diversified company. For example, Pixar. Pixar started out as a computer animation studio. Pixar entered into an alliance with Disney to finance and distribute their new movies. Disney had a distribution network and excellent reputation in animated movies. Both were assets that were imperative to commercializing Pixar's films. In return, Disney was able to add to its product line and gain the rights to Pixar's characters and any sequels. Pixar was a huge success and the bargaining power shifted. In 2005, Disney acquired Pixar for $7.4 million. By acquiring Pixar, Disney was able to gain an insight into computer animation as well as the rights and expanding their product line. In 2009, Disney acquired Marvel Entertainment to address their poor performance in movies. Marvel's superheroes grossed a cumulative $14 billion at the box office with the Avengers bringing in more than $1.5 billion. In 2012, Disney made another large acquisition, Lucasfilms, for $4 billion. This was also to continue improving their movie line. To continue to have success in movies, it depends more on what content you are providing and the value customers place with it. With mergers and acquisitions, Disney has made an impressive product line and strategic corporate level strategy. Disney Media Networks is the largest segment of Disney's subsidiaries, contributing 45% of revenue and 63% of total operating income. They acquired ABC and A&E Network in 1996 from Capital Cities Communications. ABC added ABC Family, ABC News, ESPN, and ABC television stations, of which ESPN is a leading revenue producer. The acquisition of ABC also included ABC Studios, which in includes studio production for shows such as Jimmy Kimmel, Castle, Once Upon a Time, and Criminal Minds, among many others. Favorites, and so without further ado, the Candy Monster strikes again. 
Last night, we ate every bit of your Halloween candy. <laughs> what a lovely name. Thanks. Welcome to Storybrook. We all know it. We all feel it. It's been six days. We're all still waiting. In 2009, A&E contributed Lifetime to add to Disney's portfolio. Disney's diversified portfolio now includes Disney, Disney Junior, Disney XD, ESPN, ABC Family, History, Soap, Lifetime, and A&E on cable, and ABC television stations for broadcasting revenue. Disney's acquisition of ABC was the addition of an established network that allowed it to compete with international media conglomerates. Disney provided a good post-merger integration, which has left its acquisitions alone and treated them more as an alliance rather than full integration. This has allowed the acquired to continue with their unique added value. Media Networks is split into two sections, Cable Network contributing 71% of revenue and Broadcasting contributes 29%. Disney provides more than 50% of the industry total value in the U.S. The strategy leading to all forms of entertainment is helping Disney outperform the Dow Jones Industrial Average for numerous years. You must turn your own chair around if you want others to do so. Tell me about it. I just did. Disney is also a joint venture of Hulu by uh, owning 32% of the company. Disney provides episodes of primetime TV shows from the ABC network. Disney knows that cable TV is starting to fall short to online alternatives like Hulu and Netflix. Adding a share of Hulu's ownership is a part of Disney's strategy of the future. I would not be surprised to see Disney purchase a share of Netflix in the future or buy more Hulu and turn it around. Vertical Integration While there be many forms of vertical integration used in the huge world known as Disney, the one I found the most used and most successful was their strategy of finding young talent at a young age and breeding them of sorts to become music stars. When people hear the term Disney music stars, they instantly think of Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato, Jonas Brothers, and Hilary Duff. The idea of bringing up children in the industry started all the way back in the 1950s though, when the first Mickey Mouse Club was started. While this lasted many years, it wasn't extremely popular and canceled in a few years, but had revival, revitalized in 1989 and was a huge hit. The new Mickey Mouse Club included megastars we know today as Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and Ryan Gosling, who obviously went a different direction with his career. I'm now going to slowly talk about how Disney was able to find a young Justin Timberlake and how he really made the Disney Club a must-watch. Actually, me and Justin were wondering how you guys got the name for your band, Escape. Yeah, I heard you guys got it because you were in this recording studio and an oil refinery, and you guys escaped while these big barrels of oil were blowing up around you. Boom! 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 Justin was found in Nashville during a casting audition where he shined and left and left Disney no other choice but to add him to the new Mickey Mouse Club. The Mickey Mouse Club may have only lasted two years or four seasons with the young Justin on it, but it was not due to the ratings. Ratings boomed with a young crowd of him, Brittany, and Christina and was a much-watched show all over the nation. But some of the older members of the group were too overconfident and left and wanted to start their own group and their own careers, leaving the younger cast out, such as Justin out. This this proved to be a break. Just this proved to be the break Justin needed because after his brief yet huge success showing on the Disney Channel, he was a very popular kid in America. Then in 1996, he joined a band called NSYNC, and you could say the rest and the rest was history for him, as he has gone to win countless Grammys and many other awards. Oh, you want me to sing? <laughs> I will also talk about the success that was Miley Cyrus on Disney and how she would not be the same pop star we know today without the Disney Channel. Miley Cyrus got her first big break in Hollywood working with Disney on a new show called Pan Montana. This was by far one of Disney's most popular shows and brought huge revenues and was very profitable for the Disney company as well as, well as Miley. While being known as Hannah Montana, Miley released many smash hit and singles for the Disney Channel along with multiple sellout tours and seemed, to be a, and seemed to be the good girl of our generation. Before leaving the show, she started the Disney movie, she starred in the Disney movie Hannah Montana, which was at one point the highest grossing movie of the year in 2007, which followed a series of disappointments for the Disney Channel movies. 
While Miley may not be the innocent girl we know today, she is an extreme success story for Disney and was huge for the company in her brief stint. Disney Consumer Products is the business segment of, Walt, of the Walt Disney Company. With the leadership of Bob Chappick, DCP delivers innovative and engaging products which range from toys to apparel and even fine art. Their primary focus is on growth, quality, and innovation. In 1929, Walt Disney licensed the image of Mickey Mouse to use on a children's writing tablet. Kay Kamen took over for what would become Disney licensing in 1932 and set the standard for licensing in the entertainment industry. Today, there are five brand pro priorities that encompass the Disney product line. These are Disney Media, Classics and Entertainment, Disney and Pixar Animation Studios, Disney Princess and Disney Fairies, Lucasfilm, and Marvel. By utilizing these brands, DCP brings the magic of Disney into consumers' homes with products everyone can enjoy. In 1987, Disney opened its first retail store in Glendale, California. This gave birth to the themed retail business model. The Disney store carries high quality products, including ones that support key characters and initiatives, including Pixar, Lucasfilm, and Marvel. Each location offers a unique shopping experience that only Disney could provide. Today, there are more than 200 locations in the United States, 40 in Japan, more than 80 in Belgium, Denmark, France, and Ireland and Italy. There are also more than 80 in Portugal, Spain, and the United Kingdom. The Disney Store also, of course, operates.